There is three things inspiring this video. One is a search for a 250 gram FPV drone, which is so important these days. Two is getting a bind and fly that has a wax nail VTX on it. And number three is to do all this whilst still keeping in a budget. A sub 250 grams FPV drones is so important these days because of regulations. There are many countries that has a very hard and restrictive regulations and people can fly anything bigger or heavier than 250 grams. And therefore they are looking to get something that they want and they can fly on all possible ways that they can think about under the 250 grams mark. The second part, getting something with wax nail in it, it's very important for me because the big manufacturers are forgetting or are not installing anymore wax nail. Some people think that this is because of pressure from DGI towards these other companies saying, if you do this, I'm not gonna give you a better price or I'm not gonna let you use some kind of discount or anything like that. Some other people think that it's just business matter, right? Voxnail is not selling enough, therefore the big manufacturers are not selling drones by and flight with that kind of VTX. These are the reasons why I went on a search for a drone that fit this description and I came across the Darwin FPV Tiny Ape 25 HD. But then of course the question is, is this drone any good? Is it worth for me to bring it to the shop and offering to you guys? That's what we're gonna try to see on this video and hopefully I can give you some information that is useful for you in the future. Let me tell you about my experience with this drone. The first thing that I noticed when I got it was that the VTX was super close to the all-in-one board. And I got a little bit scared when I saw it like that. Also, if you look closely, the props are very close to the frame as well. And I was wondering, is this something that can create some kind of problem in the future? I actually, I made a post on Instagram saying, do you guys think that this is okay? Should I go and fly it without doing anything else? And a lot of the answers were like, oh, you should have some kind of isolation between the boards just in case. And some other people were kind of happy saying, yeah, I can see light, go ahead and just fly it. If this was my own creation and I was building this kind of drone, like I would have put something in between, like maybe some kind of tape, isolation tape or something similar to that. But this is a binary flight and I want to test it as the manufacturer is providing because that's the way that you are gonna get it if you decide to buy it. I then went ahead and I took this drone for a spin. And I don't know if it's gonna happen something bad after the first flight, but let's try and see what we get. And the first impression that I got from the drone when it lifted was, oh, this is not good. It has a lot of vibrations. I felt that I could barely control it. And I decided to come back and check on Betafly what was going on with the tune on this drone because I didn't find it any good at all. Actually, the problem was, or the problem is, that there is no tuning. There is the default Betafly tuning on this drone. And if these days you're telling me that you're gonna go with the default tuning, maybe if you are talking about a five inches drone, that's kind of okay. But on a three and a half, even a two and a half drone, default Betafly is not acceptable. Um, I gave this feedback to Darwin FPV and honestly, I thought it was pretty bad that they are selling the drones like this, but the guys told me this is the way that we've been doing, no one has complained before, no one has said anything about it, and when I said, but it's flying like crap, I can't fly something like this, I, I wouldn't want to buy something that is flying like this. They kind of understood it. and. To my surprise, they created a tuning for me in no time and when I started to fly with that tuning, things were completely different. I have to say that even after flying a few flights or many flights, crashing a couple of times against even metal posts, the drone is still in one piece. There hasn't been any kind of burning or short circuit because of this uh, close proximity of the, of the boards. And it looks like that problem that I had in my head was not really a big problem in the end. 
There is a second thing that disappoints me from this drone as I receive it, and it's the fact that the drone has actually express solaris on SPI receiver. It's not that big of a deal, right? But these days you're expecting that manufacturers are using serial express solaris, which is going to be easier for you to upgrade. In the case of this drone, it came with an all beta fly version, meaning that it also had a an all uh, Express LRS version and I couldn't upgrade it to three point something without having to upgrade the whole beta flight, right? That's the way that SPI receivers work. But then again, since I receive a new tuning from Darwin FPV, that one was created on Betafly 4.4, which also meant that I could upgrade Express LRS. If Darwin FPV is offering this or will offer this new tuning and this new Express LRS version in their website, I'm not 100% sure. But if you want what I got, I'm gonna try to do something on the description of this video so you can get that file or that CLI and you can have the benefits of having Betafly 4.4 and this tuning which is much better than the default tuning. So the drone flies well, it has walk snail and it's kind of inexpensive at $269.99 US dollar. But would I recommend this drone? This is the way that I think. If Darwin FPV decides to start shipping these drones with the new CLI that they gave to me, then it's, it's, it's a very good thing, right? Like if they don't, the drone that you're gonna be receiving is gonna be kind of crappy because you're gonna go out and fly and it's gonna be shaky and it's not gonna be a nice experience. There is also this about on my second flight, just after I got the drone out and I tested for the first time and I found this shaky stuff that I was talking about, two of the four motors didn't spin at all, without any reason. I kind of didn't know what to do because it never had happened to me before. And I just unplugged the battery, throw, threw the, the drone in, in a box and kind of forgot, forgot about it. The next day I said, let me try again and see what if, if I can do something, if, I, if there is something to save this drone. And when I plug it, everything was working. I don't know why it didn't work before, or I don't know if I did something that fixed it. And I wouldn't be able to give you an advice of do this or do that if this happens to you, but it happened to this drone. If it's gonna happen all the time or not, I have no idea. I have flown the drone many, many more times after that single occasion and it has not happened again. It could be that since I upgraded to Betafly 4.4, this is something that fixed that problem. I'm not sure again, but we go back to if Darwin FPV sends these drones to the customers with Betafly 4.4, Express LRS, the highest version, which means that they also have this new tune, then again, it's a good thing. In all honesty, I actually enjoy quite a lot flying this drone. It's a nimble drone that you can test your skills, you know, do the freestyle move that you are thinking, especially if you're a beginner, which I'm guessing that is the reason why you're looking for a budget drone to be the first one that you can crash and not hurt yourself that much in your wallet because of crashing it or breaking it. This drone gave me or gave me a, a very good sensation, a very good experience while flying. It actually reminds me of my very first drone, the, the Emax Tiny Hawk Freestyle. It's kind of similar shape, it doesn't have any kind of ducts around or any kind of protections for the props. And it's also very nice flying and this again quiet drone small that you can bring to a park or you can bring somewhere that people won't be afraid of it because it's so small and so quiet that it's not going to be bothering around. But even though I actually would recommend this drone for you guys uh, if you are in the, on the budget, I have to say that I decided I will bring a few to the shop to test and see if I can offer it to some of my customers. And when I asked Darwin to provide me a few of them, their answer was, we have to make them. What does this mean? And it's something that is happening a lot with manufacturers in China. When you actually place the order, it's when they start building the drone. They don't have stock. That's one of the reasons why normally if you buy it directly from China, for example, there's gonna be a delay 
until they actually ship it and then you're gonna have, have to wait for the the shipping the moving the part from china to whatever country you are this is something that they are not telling people they are doing it i'm guessing to save some money and they they just produce the the quantity that they are requested by you know customers already paying for it but as for us for the users it's kind of very bad because it they make you wait a long time especially in the case of darwin fpv this is something that i I think it's a bad move on their side because they are a budget brand, right? They are famous because they are budget. But if you are a budget brand, you are competing with the big ones and your advantage is price. But if you or the, the user wants to buy it and they have to wait a longer time, you are giving the user enough time to think about it and say, no, I'd rather have another one. People might be more willing to wait for something that is better that they have the perception that is better and i would think i would bet that they are more willing to spend less money for something that might not be as good if they are fast and they can get it and go and fly it so again i don't think this is a big a good strategy from darwin fpv of waiting making the users the, the the customers wait for their drones and of course it's the same for me as a shop if i have to wait a month since i pay to get those things to me it's not going to be good for my business so as a conclusion i will say like this this is a drone that i like i've i flew it many hours and i have enjoyed quite a lot it's a budget drone it's on the low price on, on the low range of the prices which is kind of difficult these days to find. It's HD because it has walks now, which is fantastic. And I, so long it hasn't broken, it hasn't burned, it, it hasn't had any kind of problem that you will say, oh, this is kind of like a drone that you use a few times and then you throw away. That's not the case, that's not my experience. But availability could be an issue. And again, it's gonna make you think twice if you're gonna get that cheap drone if it's not available on different shops or from the manufacturer. Tell me, what do you think? Is it something that you would like to get for yourself? This is what I had for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to leave a like, comments and all those kind of things that helps us produce more of these videos without costing you anything. Thank you for watching and see you soon.